Hi there, and thank you so much for joining us today. Today we've got an exciting topic to dive into, installing Cockpit on your Proxmox server. But before we get started with the installation process, let's take a quick look at what Cockpit brings to the table and why it might be time to consider making the switch. First, let's talk about the features that Cockpit and Proxmox have in common. This will help you understand the familiar ground we're working with. Imagine this as our first slide, and then we'll move on to the really exciting part. Now on this next slide, we'll explore what sets Cockpit apart from Proxmox. These are the features unique to Cockpit, and the reasons why you should seriously consider adding it to your toolbox. Now, let's look at the common features between Cockpit and Proxmox. Web-based management interface. Remote server management. Virtual machine management container management. Real-time system monitoring. User authentication and authorization. System resource utilization tracking network configuration, and monitoring centralized server management. These are the unique features of Cockpit that is its advantages over Proxmox. Intuitive and user-friendly interface. Supports managing multiple servers from a single interface. Enhanced system. Configuration tools. Integration with various Linux server components. Extensibility through add-ons and plugins. Active development and community support. Comprehensive system logs and reports. Mobile-friendly design for on-the-go management. Improved security and authentication options. Support for various Linux distributions. Cockpit's installation is where the real excitement begins, and to guide us through this process, we've got our resident cockpit expert, Nico. Now, I should mention that Nico speaks with a Dodecanese European accent, but fear not, as he speaks the Queen's English fluently. So, without further ado, let me hand over the presentation to Nico who will walk us through the installation process and show us just how easy it is to get started with Cockpit on your Proxmox server. Nico, take it away. Thank you, Josh. Hi there. Today we're going to look at another way of managing virtual machines. We have been using Proxmox. Now we are going to look at using Cockpit. And there is a sting in the tail of this presentation. So watch this to the end so that you can know where and when to use Cockpit and where and when to use Proxmox. The instructions for this video can be found down below. You will get a link to our blog page. This is the blog page. Follow the instructions exactly as they are there. I've already logged in with SSH as a non-root user. And then I did the sudo su dash command so that I elevated my user as root. And with that, we start by sudo apt update. Right, we've done that. Now let's copy this command here. This is going to install a few things. You need cockpit. You also need cockpit machines. Without you, that, you cannot manage VMs and those other commands, PCP and cockpit PCP. So let's paste that here and run this. I've made a note here that optionally you can install package kit and vert user. This will allow you to do upgrades instead of what I'm doing now in the terminal uh, where I had to do a sudo dash su and then did a sudo upgrade. You can do that from the cockpit. Very nice features cockpit has. We will see them after the installation. What I'm also going to do is, I'm going to run, take this command, copy it. I want to see the status of cockpit socket. So I'm going to copy this command here and paste it. And I'm just going to change the command to status. And I must remove the now. So... Keep our fingers crossed. 
Aha, it's, that's a good sign. Now let's copy this command again. We need to type Q to exit and paste. We've now enabled it. We now need to start it. And then these commands here as well. I've done that. Copy and paste. And this command here. Actually, I should do a start. Let's just go back there, enable, change this now to start. I need to update these notes. Okay, now copy this command. PM logger. Enable. Run it again. This time we're going to say start. And then this is a command we need to do in the firewall to create cockpit as a service. So let's paste this in here using the firewall command. You need to create a non-root user. So you would use the command sudo add user my cockpit user. You can call it what you like and then you need to add it into the libvirt. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to use this for my user. Copy. My user is Nick M. Right, I've done that. Next, you need to get the IP of your server. I know mine is 10.154.2.89, but in your case, just paste the command in there. And now we've got to look for an INET. There it is. This is the one we want. So that's the one you're looking for. And I've verified it, 10.154.2.89. So that's the IP you need. I should now be able to open this in the browser. I will get this error because this thing is using a private certificate, not a public certificate. So just go to advanced and then just say proceed. Now you will need to use your non-root user. I'm now going to expand the screen because I don't need this anymore. And in fact, let's just drop that down. I am going to show two scenarios. In the first scenario, I am going to download from a Proxmox server an existing VM. And then I'm going to import the file. I am going to take a VM from my Proxmox server and I'm going to stop it, download it, import it into Cockpit. This is the, the way that you can bring existing VMs into Cockpit. In this case, I need to know where this file is saved. I created this folder called VM Data. And in there, my ISO files and my VMs are stored. If I use FileZilla, I can FTP to my Proxmox server. And in my case, this is the folder. It will be Mount PVE. You will look into this folder, Mount PVE, M and T PVE, in your Proxmox server to see where your server is storing the images. I have a folder called VM data and all my VMs get created in there. If you look at the 
Proxmox server, let's go back to it. You will see that when you create your VMs, you give them a number, a VM number. I'm looking now at 850. This is down here. This particular VM is a Ubuntu VM. 850. And if I go to my FileZilla, I have found it here. It's sitting inside images. 850. If I open this folder, there is the file. It's a QCOW2 file. This is the file that contains your VM data. Now, in my case, it's quite a big file. So you download these QCOW2 files from your Proxmox server and then upload them into the OPT folder. You can create whatever folder you want but I, I will show you what I have done on my server. There I have downloaded the files from my Proxmox server. I have uploaded these files to my server that I'm going to run cockpit. These are the VMs that I'm particularly interested in. I've already imported the one. Here it is, Ubuntu VM85. That was the one that uh, we downloaded. This one here, VM85. I have imported it into my cockpit server. If you want to work with VMs, you either import and then here we give it a name. Let's say this was Ubuntu VM. And then you go and you look for the source. So mine, I like to use opt folder slash opt. And I like to create a folder called VMs. So inside there, and then you select the QCOW2 file. So let's say I selected this one. And then you choose your operating system. Now here I need to make you aware of something. If you want to run cockpit, it is advisable not to do it in a Ubuntu or even on a Proxmox server, because Ubuntu does not support and manage this application. However, Red Hat does manage it. If you are using Rocky Linux, CentOS 9, or Red Hat Enterprise, then, then you will be fine with the latest versions. So that is the consideration you need to make. You've selected, you've given it a name, you've selected the image, and then you say import. Then you click here. This machine's already installed, so I should be able to log in. This serves to show you how you can import a VM. The next thing I'm going to do is to show you how to create a VM. So to create a VM, you click on there. You also need to give it a name. So let's call this CentOS 8. Now we want to download the OS, which is quite nice. There's only a CentOS 7. Okay, so let's make this CentOS 7. You see, this is the problem when you're using an Ubuntu machine and you're not using a Red Hat or Rocky Linux then it's not supporting the new technologies. But this is good enough for now. Just make sure you give it enough memory, 2 gig or 4 gig. Now I can say create. It's busy creating the installation. When it's done, I will be able to log in. And this will give you a guided installation of the server. Cockpit has got some nice features, like you can get the overview of the system. You can see how much CPU and memory usage the, the system has. This is the host. Uh, you can look at logs. You can look at the storage, networking. I can see the traffic on the server transmitting, receiving. These are nice features that Cockpit gives you. As I said earlier, I started the installation. 
and it's brought it up to this window. Now here you can do the complete installation of the CentOS. I do not wish to continue, but I did want to show you this is how you would do it. And if I go back to the top, I can click on virtual machines and there I see all my machines. I can see which ones are running. If I compare this with Proxmox, they both have their own advantages. I would not install Cockpit to replace Proxmox and I would use Proxmox on its own. It's a much easier installation than to try to get Cockpit to work. However, I would prefer not to, to use Proxmox if I want to use a CentOS or CentOS derivative operating system like Rocky Linux. In that case, I definitely would make the case to use Cockpit because Cockpit is supported by Red Hat and you can download the latest VMs. They are all there. Debian is what they install Proxmox on, or when you install Proxmox, you're basically installing Debian. If you want to make the decision to use this virtual machine manager, use it on the right platform. Do not use it on Ubuntu or any of the other non-Red non Hat operating systems. And with that, I hand you back to Josh. Josh, back to you. We thank you for watching this video and spending your valuable time with us today. Now let's recap what we've learned in this video. Nico expertly guided us through the installation of Cockpit on your Proxmox server, showcasing its fantastic features and advantages. We've seen how Cockpit provides a user-friendly interface, real-time system monitoring, and enhanced security, making server management a breeze. But our learning doesn't end here. We want to hear from you. Please take a moment to leave a comment about this video. Your feedback is incredibly valuable to us, and it helps us create content that's even more tailored to your needs. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated with our latest content, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on our informative videos and tutorials. And for those of you who want to take your knowledge to the next level, consider becoming a Patreon. As a Patreon supporter, You'll gain access to our exclusive training courses in PDF format as they become available. It's a fantastic way to deepen your expertise and support the channel at the same time. Once again, thank you for being a part of our community, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Until then, keep learning and exploring the world of technology with us.